What's up, y'all? This is Hammer here again, back with another video. And today, I'm going to be talking about what's currently happening right now in Tunisia. And the reason I want to talk about, once again, it goes back to what I said in my previous video about the fact that black people don't have the ambition and the killer instinct for power that other good people have. And so this makes you vulnerable for abuse. But another thing I want to add into this video is that a lot of black Africans don't recognize that whether they like it or not, whether they want to acknowledge it or not, they have been forced into a racial classification. All of them. It doesn't matter whether you're Igbo, Yoruba, or, 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 or what tribe you're from. When you leave the African continent, you're just a black African. Even within the African continent, right, if you cross into North Africa, you are just a black African, right? They, they'll call you Habib quick. And it's so interesting because this is a reality that has existed on the continent for a very long time, but a lot of black Africans seem to, they will turn the cheek or look away and ignore it. What I'm talking about is the fact that it has been very clear and very well known for a very long time that North Africans do not consider themselves Africans. They don't. They view themselves as essentially a separate entity. Most, all of them are essentially a part of the Arab League, and in practice, they actually are more aligned with the Arab-born deal with the African continent. But interesting how this, although they will go out of the way and make it clear to black Africans that, hey, we are not, you know, um, 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 we, we are Arab first. Uh, um, we, we don't want to allow black Africans. Despite them doing this, despite them mistreating black migrants who go to North Africa, despite all these things, black Africans will still go out of the way to make them feel comfortable. And, then, you know, it, it reminds me of what recently happened, because recently, right, I was on a panel um, um, with Kaizo, shout out to Kaizo, and I was talking to, to, to a Nigerian brother called Tunisia. I will also discuss in the situation in regards to the um, what's happening in Tunisia. Uh, and before I continue, let me just explain, right? So what's going on in Tunisia is this. Um, the president of Tunisia a couple of months ago came out and said that, you know, there's a lot of black migrants from sub-Saharan Africa going to Tunisia. And the reason why that was a problem for him, because from, from his point of view, right, these migrants are trying to change the demographics of Tunisia from, quote-unquote, an Arab country into a black African nation. And so because of this, he said, we have to stop these, these quote-unquote, black, black. And of course, the crazy part is that, right, he said this, and yet black African leaders were quiet. The, the most that happened is that the African Union, you know, came out and said, oh, we are against racialized uh, um, hate speech. And uh, I think they, 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 they banned the meeting with Tunisia, but that was about it. But interesting how when it came to Mali, they had no problem suspending Mali when Mali had the coup. But yet, Kaid, I'm sorry, I'm the president of Tunisia society, right? He can stage a coup in his country, essentially say all kinds of racist, you, you know, um, language towards black Africans within this country, and the African Union, Union would do nothing. He, 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 uh, Tunisia will still be allowed to oppose the African Union. And when I told Tunisia this hypocrisy, of course, you know, he wanted to dump. I said, look, let's be honest here, okay? What is going on on the ground is that black Africans don't want to accept this. One, you are in a racial war globally, and you're in a racial war even within your own continent. And it's like running from it, hiding from it is not going to change anything. It's not just that globally black Africans are essentially forced. In, 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 black Africans, right, globally are forced into the black classification, right? And so because of this, they are essentially relegated at the bottom of the totem pole. Right. But even within their own continent, North Africans, who they try to include, also put them in this classification, too. And, in, and even the Horners, where right? you look at Somalia, Somalis love calling black folks Jiria. And so when you look at what's happening in Tunisia and you look at how these folks are being abused and yet black African nations are suddenly like, why is this happening? 
But anyway, let me go ahead and play this video so y'all can see what I'm talking about, and then we can continue. We begin this news hour with exclusive coverage from a heavy militarized zone on the border between Tunisia and Libya. 1,200 migrants, including pregnant women and 29 children, are stranded there with little food, water or shelter. All were rounded up in Tunisia and bused to the border. But Libyan border guards are refusing to let them in. The foreign ministries of both countries have discussed what they call the irregular migration. Human Rights Watch accuses Tunisia of violating international law by collective expulsions of black migrants, mostly from sub-Saharan Africa, and says they need immediate humanitarian aid. Our reporter, Malik Trainer is the only journalist there and has been speaking to some of those stranded. Can you tell me, did you come from Svakis? Yes. Who brought you here? Who brought you here? The Tunisians. And what, what is it you want? What is it you want? We want to go back our country. Almost six days, they don't drink food. Have you had, have you had water? Have you had food? We don't oh. have water. We don't have nothing. We don't have, we don't have nothing right now. If you have some deep on yours, the Nivea is going to be with us and deep us what we drink. Yesterday, as you can, as you can see, we're, we're here on the Libyan and Tunisian border. And where these hundreds of migrants and refugees were brought here by Tunisian authorities, this is what they're telling us. And you can see the condition is dire. We have people, there are people here that are injured, that are in dire need, that are desperate for some kind of help. We're seeing women and children, they want to feel safe. They want a safe haven. What happens when you try to go back to Tunisia? What happens? They were beating us like muscles. Some, some of them, their food was broke. They beat us three people there. Almost three people there broke their leg. Most three people there. One and children and there. Like there are women and children. They are beating everybody. They are not eating enough. No more serious is short. It's the short But we don't do to them. We go to address to them. They, they took us out with their boys. They are, they are us not boys. They are because they... Some of them are saying they've been here for six days. Others for a little bit shorter. But you, we can see they're injured. People are injured. Women and children. Uh, the situation is desperate. There needs to be some sort of a solution uh, to this to this crisis. Uh, now, Libyans will say that they're already dealing with with a migrant migration problem. There are over, according to the UN, there are more, over 700,000 migrants in Libya. Some people are telling us that they want to be deported back to their country. Others that they want to go to Europe. Uh, but for these people here, the situation is desperate. And. <laughs> Now, keep this in mind, okay? Most of these migrants are coming from West Africa, Black African nations, right? And there has not been a single word at all. And if you noticed, they're not being, you know, you, you notice how these people are not, these people are not being called African, right? They're called Black Africans. I want you to keep this in mind. And this is what I was trying to say, like, whenever they, whenever people refer to the African continent, they don't include everyone. Black Africans were the only ones that do this. Everywhere across the world, people separate North Africa from the rest of the continent. In fact, they, they separate North Africa and the Horn. That's really it. It's only Black Africans that want to include them, right? And it's like, here's my... They specifically said black African migrants, right? Going into Arab, you know, Tunisia. And of course, you know, pr the president of Tunisia came out and said, oh, you know, we are proud of African identity. We're African. As I see, this is what I'm talking about. North Africans have been able to play both sides for a very long time. Because here, here's the reality. They understand they're in a very delicate situation. Right, because you know, recently I, I look at them. I was doing some, you know, doing some missions, right? And I found okay, so Africa has like fifty-four Af countries, okay. North African nations make up about eight, right? Eight. These are what I would call majority non-black countries. Eight, and then you have the Horn, which is four, okay. So if you even remove that, right, you end up with what forty-two. So that means out of fifty-four. Now, if my math, math is correct, right, by 54, 42, con if you remove 8 out of the right, 4, let me see, no, sorry, no, sorry, 8 plus 4, that becomes 12, right? That's 
Yeah. So if you remove uh um quote unquote eight from fifty four, right? Um that's forty eight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you remove, you know, um twelve from fifty four, that ends up being forty two. So that means I have the fifty four countries. It, it ends up, if we remove North Africa and the Horn of Africa from the African continent, you still will end up with forty two countries that are majority black. Which means that seventy seven percent of the African continent is 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 ruled by a black majority. So what does that mean? What that essentially means is that when you look at, at North Africans, right, they recognize they're in a very delicate situation. On the one hand, right, they identify more with the Arab world, but on the other hand, they are a minority on the continent. And, and they realize that if black Africans decide to come together and make a coalition, they, will, they, they can essentially ice out or cut off the North, Af- the North Africans. They can surround them. If all the 42 black countries came, you know, if all the 42 black African countries came together and made their own coalition, right, they could literally push North Africa, like literally push the edge, literally surround them, all right? And so to avoid that situation, they, they, they do what I call, they essentially play both sides, right? They, on one hand, have full loyalty to the Arab League, but then they will go to Black Africa and say, oh, we are African too, just so they can prevent Black Africans from, from having some any kind of, you know, racial coalition. That's what they do, all right? They are part-time Africans. They only claim Africa when it benefits them. That, that's how they operate. And they've been able to do this for a very long time. And Black Africans don't see how they're being manipulated, how we're being manipulated. We're being manipulated, we don't see it. Well, I see, but others don't. Okay? Their loyalty is with the Arab bro. Their loyalty is with the Arab League. They're part of the Arab League. They only claim African, right, in order to prevent black Africans from, quote-unquote, cutting them off or to prevent black Africans from creating their own sort of, you know, black coalition. That's what it is. So they will convince black... You know, I'm going to give an example, right, look. The way North Africans behave is how minorities behave in the United States, Right? I'm going to give you an example. White people make up the majority of the country, right? They're about close to 60% of the population, right? Minorities understand that because white people make up the majority of the country, it is in our interest for them to not have a racial identity. Because if they were to come together and have a, a, a racial identity, a strong racial identity, they will be they can form a majority block and essentially dominate all of us. So it is a, in, our, in our interest to convince as many white people as possible to not have any kind of racial identity whatsoever. Because then this allows us to, to have, you know, more, more freedom, more leeway, even though they're the majority. That's what North Africans do with black Africans. They will have a racial identity of Arab while they will try to convince black Africans to not have any kind of racial identity whatsoever. Because they recognize the only way they can have they can they can they can they can have leverage on the continent is by essentially preventing black Africans from having any kind of racial identity. Because the moment black Africans have a racial identity, they will unify and, and, and become a majority bloc, and they'll be able to dominate both the North North Africans and the Horn. That's the reason why it is in their interest to, one, be a part of the Arab League and maintain their Arab racial identity, while at the same time convince or trick or manipulate black Africans to not do the same and say, oh, well, we're all African, right? We, we're all the same. While at the same time, the moment you black Africans go into Tunisia, go into these North African nations, they have no problem beating you down, calling you Habib. <laughs> like, it just, you can't make this shit up. And see, this is what gets me so mad. This is what gets me so mad is that black Africans don't even recognize this. But see, another angle to this, right, is that when you look at, at, at for example, the, the, the massive migration that's, you know, going through North Africa and going to Europe, right? White Europeans, in my opinion, are also another factor in, into the situation because... Because they're the ones that extracted wealth and resources from, you know, Africa, specifically black countries, right? This is the reason why many of these black migrants feel like they almost have to cross, you know, take these long journeys to cross into Europe. And it's like, 
for Europeans now to all of a sudden say, oh, you know, so stay in your country. I, you know, I remember there was this white dude who told me Europe is for Europeans. And I almost, I, I almost slammed the face. I was like, wait a minute. For you to say Europe is for Europeans now is like, it makes my blood boil. Because once again, you were, Europe was not, like, you guys were not saying Europe is for Europeans during the Berlin conference. You weren't saying Europe is for Europeans when you wiped the Native Americans. You weren't saying Europe is for Europeans when you were taking North America, Australia, and New Zealand, or quote unquote, creating settler states in, in Zimbabwe and, and South Africa, or, or Rhodesia, right? But now that migrants are coming into, your, into Europe, oh, now Europe is European. No. You, you don't get to colonize the globe and then complain about migration. You don't get to extract wealth from other places in the world and then complain about migration. I, I, I see the same behavior. White Americans will complain about, you know, migrants from South America, even though the United States strategically undermines South, South America using the, the Monroe Doctrine for years, right? Destabilize those countries. But then when, when these, when, 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 when these mestizos want to migrate to America, you want to complain about it. Same thing with Europeans, right? They colonized Africa. They, they stabilized Africa for years. Now you got black migrants going to Europe. Now you want to complain about it? No. But it's like everyone's being a hypocrite. But, 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 but see, what, what I'm trying to say here is this, right? You have, mul like, you have multiple things going on at the same time, right? You have the fact that black Africans, whether they like it or not, they have been forced into the black classification, Right, and because of this, they are essentially treated. They're essentially treated at the bottom. Like, look at how Europe treats Africa. Right, the way they treat North Africans is very different. In fact, the the most developed region of the African continent is North Africa. The only exception is in South Africa. Once again, South Africa does not count because we all know it's because of, of of the white minority there. Okay, so they they will go out of the way to ensure that the quote-unquote black part, the, the black nations of Africa are impoverished, but, but, but the quote-unquote, you know, uh, uh, non-black people in North Africa are in a better situation. And the only exception is South Africa because of the, the whites who live there, right? And even then, they will also pay North African nations to brutalize or quote-unquote keep migrants from sitting to Europe. Because all, right? And, and, and with all of this being done, Black Africans still fail to recognize how, whether they like it or not, they're in a racial war, okay? Everyone is trying to keep you at the bottom. It's not just an American thing. Globally, you have been classified as a black population. That, look, you know, I was having a conversation with, with a black and I said, look, when people say sub-Saharan Africa, it's not just a geographical term. Sub-Saharan Africa is, is also is also meant to be a racial demarcation, right? It's meant to say, hey, this is where all of the blacks live. That's what it's used for, okay? This is where all of the blacks on the African continent live, right? And so, of course, you know, black Africans still don't understand this. Like, well, well, what, dude, once again, it's a term to reckon, and they're kind of right. It's, it's a term to show that, you know, the whole idea of that term it's meant to showcase that whether you like it or not, people don't view Africa as the same. They separate you based on racial blood. And, and see, I had to sit back and ask myself, okay, why is it that black Africans, despite everything that's happened, whether it's, it, it, it's you know, you, despite everything that's happened, right, whether it's a fact that, you know, North Africans call them Habib, North Africans, you know, uh, uh, call them racial slurs, whether it's a fact that you got Somalis calling them Jaria, whether it's a fact that you got uh, um, Europeans, you know, literally, of course, abusing them, right? And even when it comes to the Asians, right, look, China is obviously, look, when it comes to China, right, although China is, is, is giving you an opportunity to industrialize, the Chinese don't know like black people, <laughs> right? Even they look down upon you. And it's like, we're like, literally with all of these different groups around the world, right, telling you that, hey, you are in this racial classification why is it that despite all of these encounters, black Africans still fail to recognize it? Right? I had to ask myself that question, right? You know, the Arabs, uh, the, the Europeans, the Middle Easterners, the Mediterraneans, the Asians, 
all of them, even for even the, the, the mestizos, everyone across the world is telling you that, hey, you have been put into this black classification, whether you like it or not. And yet black Africans still don't, don't want to accept it. And in my opinion, what I've come to, to, to understand is that the reason for this is because if they were to accept this reality, right, then they would have to accept that Africa is split. And I've had this conversation, right? If you look at the African continent, okay, North African nations, right, essentially are, 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 majority, non, are majority non-black, right? They make around eight countries, okay? Now, of course, I included Sudan there, right, because uh, Sudan, because they, they're essentially Arabized, but if they make up eight countries, right? For them to accept that they now live in a world of racial classification, for them to accept that they that they, 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 they are essentially in, in the for them to accept that, that they are not in the black classification, we mean they will also have to accept the African continent is also split on racial on, on racial on the race war too. And if they were to accept that, I mean that, that means that by default they can't really accept North Africa like that. They would have to cut off North Africa and even parts of the horn. And so because they don't want to deal with that reality, they want to live in this illusion of, oh, race doesn't matter, we're all the same, we're all African. And like, and, like the, and like the video shows, when you refuse to accept reality and you want to operate in this fake reality, this is what happens. You end up somewhere, you end up in North Africa being beaten down, being called the Habit, and being left to die. Okay? And one thing, another thing I think gets me so angry is how a lot of these black African nations, for some reason, they have been, how can I say this? The way they react to abuse or, I guess, misbehavior from North African nations is very different to the way they react from abuse or misbehavior from, from black African nations. So Mali and Burkina Faso can, can essentially have a coup and be kicked out immediately, even though it, it was it was the whole idea was to get rid of French influence, right? But yet, Tunisia can literally do all of this and still be a part of the African Union, right? And it goes back to what I said, right? Black Africans do not want to acknowledge the racial reality because if they did, they would have to make hard decisions. They would have to accept the reality that, hey, North Africans, although they may occupy the territory, don't identify with you. And they only claim it Africa when it's convenient. You would have to technically cut off North Africa. You would have to technically cut off the horn. Now, my thing is, I, I feel like that although a lot of black Africans may not want to do that, I feel like that's the best way forward because, once again, you still, look, black Africans still make up the overall majority, okay? 77%, 70, 42 countries, okay? Out of 54 countries, 42, 42%, 42 are a majority black. 77% of the African continent is made up of black Africans. So even if you cut them off, you will still hold the continent. But it's better for you to come together, make these coalitions, bring in Jamaica, bring in Barbados, bring in Haiti, right? So you can have a strong blah, blah. And then down the line, think about how you can slowly, I guess you could say, demographically replace North Africa, right? In the future, right? That's how you move forward. But it's like, how long are black Africans going to sit back, right, and live in this delusion? How long are black Africans going to sit back and pretend to say the African continent is now racially separated? How long? How long? Do we need, do we need to see more videos of black Africans being beaten down in, in North Africa? Is that what we need? <laughs> will, will, will that wake you up? Ugh. This is just get, gets me so fucking angry, right? But it's just... Having that debate with two Niger was just so sad, right? But I think, in my opinion, it's not just that uh, I think black Africans feel losing. Um, that, you know, I don't think black Africans believe they can actually do it on their own. You know, I had this conversation. I made a previous video about how black people don't want power. They want to be accepted. And when I said I meant black people, look, that includes black Africans. Okay, the same thing applies. Black Africans, like, even though they make up the vast majority of the continent, right? Even though they make up the vast majority of the continent, right? They will still go out of the way to try to include groups that don't want to be with them. 
North Africans tell you all the time they don't like you, they don't want to build you, like they don't want to be associated with you, right? But you're the one that's trying to include them. When you had, uh, you know, Morocco going to the World Cup, and the Morocco say Moroccan players saying, "Hey, you know, our win is a win for the Arabs," and Black Africans, you know, got mad on us because remember, Morocco was quote unquote represent represent Africa, right? And Black Africans got mad. I was like, "Why are you mad?" North Africans tell you all the time that they that they view themselves as Arab first. You're the one that wants to include them, but then when they tell you we're not African, now here's the thing, right? In practice, they don't view themselves as African, right? But when they deal with quote unquote black African nations, right, they will tell them this, right, to, 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 to quote unquote manipulate them. But in reality, that's not a truth. Okay? Not a truth. And you know it's not like you know it's not true. Like the president the president of Tunisia said that black Africans are trying to Africanize his country. Right, and then when he got called out, he said, "Well, you know, I'm a proud African." Well, 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 once again, if if Tunisia is supposedly a proud African country, why why are you saying that Black Africans are trying to Africanize your nation or trying to remove the Arab identity? Because in practice, you don't view yourself as an African nation; you view yourself as an extension of the Middle East. But you recognize that if you were to come out here and really say that Black Africans would come together and essentially ice you out. And so it's in your best interest to convince black Africans that, oh, we're all Africans so, so, so that you can continue to play both sides. That's what they do. And black Africans, they either don't know about it or they just don't care or they feel losing out. But like I said before, black people, black people do not have the killer instinct and the ambition for power that other groups of people have. We don't have it. We don't have it. We don't have it. And I think this is a reason why, even when we make up the majority of the continent, we are so scared and so feared of, uh, look, North Africans have no problem cutting off themselves out and making their own group. They have no problem being put terribly because they are confident they can do it on their own. Black Africans, however, even though, even, though, even though we make up the vast majority of the continent, we are scared of cutting them off because deep down inside, a lot of us don't think we can actually do it. We don't think... So it's, it's the same behavior you see with, 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 with Black South Africans, right? Black South Africans purposely allow themselves to be dominated by a white minority because deep down inside, uh, Black Africans don't... Black Africans do not believe they can actually do it on their own. They fear that, 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 that if they were to take back full control of the country, both economically and, and you know, politically, they would they will not be, be, be able to, quote unquote, achieve the same industrialization that the white that the white minority was able to do. So they essentially purposely agreed to a situation where they would have some political power, but all of the wealth and the control of the economy will stay in the hands of the white minority. And now it's looking like the white minority is slowly taking back the, the political power as well, too. But once again, even at, at even with them being 80% of the population, they're willing to accept being dominated by minority group because, once again, they don't think they can do it on their own. Same with black Africans, right? North African nations tend to be much more developed than the, than the quote-unquote, you know, sub-Saharan region. And that was done by design. Because European powers, right, and, and the global economic system right, has purposely gone out of its way to suppress, you know, sub-Saharan Africa, or I guess you could say Black African nation, because that's where most of the resources are. And, and, and because the, the resources that fuel the global economy primarily come from the African continent, right, or I guess the quote-unquote Black, Black African nations, it is in their interest to ensure that Black African nations are poor, so, so they can get the resources third poor cheap. It's by design. But once again, if black African, if black Africans don't recognize that they are that they are in a, in a racial classification, if they don't recognize that, that, that they are in, in, that they are technically in a racial war, they won't understand this. They won't understand why, quote unquote, Tunisia says they're African, but at the same time will essentially beat them to death and call them Habib the moment they cross to the country. <sighs> it's just it's 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 just you know, and I guess I, I I guess I'm gonna go ahead and close the video now. But before I go, you know, I was watching a show today, and 
something just came to my mind. And I said, you know, I can't blame white people anymore. I can't. Because the way I view it is, yes, they may have committed atrocities. They may have undermined black people globally. But they did whatever it took for their people to have power. They had the ambition. They had the killer instinct for power. And if black, because look, I know we, I know we can do it. I know black people, we, we can do it. We just choose not to. And so, if black Africans, if black people global, like if if we do not have the, the ambition and the killer instinct for power, I'm like at that point, you can't blame anybody else. Right, it's just like South Africa, right? If 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 you're gonna sit there and allow another group to dominate you, at that point you can't complain. And I've come to realize that until Black Africans, until Black people globally develop the develop an ambition for power, a killer instinct for power, we're going to remain at the bottom. Now I've talked about the African century for a very long time. How hey, you know, when you look at what's at what's at what's happening, right? Um, Africa is the only continent that, that, that has grown demographically. So they're going to be the last frontier from industrialization, right? And I talk about how you know, the African century is covered. I said, once again, right? It doesn't guarantee it. Same thing with the Asian century, right? You know, when you look at what happened, when you look, you know, for example, um, 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 when you look at what happened after World War II, after World War II, Asia was slowly becoming the most populous country, right? Asia was perfect, was perfectly situated, right, to 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 to, to manifest the Asian century, but they were only able to do it because they made the right moves, right? The opportunity presented itself, right, for them to essentially become the center of of, of the global economy and, and 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 the center of the globe. They made the right moves. They took advantage of the opportunity, and they are where they are, right? And black Africans are the same position, the same right? There is an opportunity, right, for the African century to, to, to manifest. There is an opportunity for black Africans to become the center of the global economy and the center of the globe. But once again, like all opportunities, right, you have to be ready to take them. If black Africans do not take this opportunity, if they do not make the right moves, they could end up having to wait. To be honest, the black one is over. <laughs> if black Africans do not make, if black Africans do not take advantage of this opportunity, if they don't make the, the, the right moves, the black race is over. Because what's going to happen is you're going to have to wait a couple hundred years to, to quote unquote, you know, for, to, to industrialize or to develop. And, and by the time that happens, You'll be so behind that you, man, you may not even exist. You'll be so behind that another group could easily come and just take to take you out. So really, it's do, it's literally do or die. If you don't take advantage of the opportunity, right, and, 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 and if you, if black Africans are not able to take advantage of this opportunity and manifest and facilitate the, the African century, not only will, will they have to wait a, a couple hundred years for, for, for another opportunity, it could essentially result in the end of the black race. Because what will happen is that they'll be so behind that another group will just come and take, take them out. And as time goes on, I hope, I hope black Africans are able to take advantage, but I, but I, I don't know anymore. Because when I see these videos of how they're sitting back allowing Tunisians to quote unquote beat them to, you know, they're sitting back and allowing North Africans to, 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 to racially abuse them in their own country. I'm like, I don't know. I hope though. I hope though. And see, the, the only hope I have is that the younger population of black Africans, as they grow up, will have a better understanding of the world, I've been in the for that. Hey, whether you like it or not, you are in a racial classification called black. You may not like it, but that's what you are. Whether you like it or not, you are in a, in a global racial war. In reality, even the even when it comes to the Chinese, even though they're helping you out, right? They don't like you. The Chinese still view black people at the bottom. So, so keep that in mind. So, you know that that, that, that just my hope that that that, that you know. Um, the, the younger pop with the younger population uh, of, of black Africans will have a different mentality, and, and I think that if that does happen, things will change, right? Things will change. Not only will they coalesce and make a black coalition, I guess you know, uh, you know, redefine, right? 
African to only mean black. African does not mean Morocco. African does not mean Tunisia. It means black indigenous people. Right? And then bring in the, you know, the, the sort of black Caribbean states of the black diaspora. That's how you move forward. Right? But we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Um, but with that being said, yo, um, I think that's about it. Is there anything I want to cover else? Uh, there's really nothing. Oh, one more thing I want to say um, before I go. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to put up more videos. But one thing I want to say before I go. When it comes to South Africa, right? You know, I... A lot of people have said that I go to all of South Africa. Look, there was recently, a, a, you know, an article, right, that was written. I think it was in the Financial Times. So it was an article by a British newspaper saying that Nigeria is now on track to do better than South Africa in the future. In other words, as time goes on, Nigeria is going to slowly bounce back, right? And South Africa is going to decline and decline and decline until they, they, they'll be in the worst position in Zimbabwe. And this is a British newspaper saying this. And, and when I read the article, I didn't know how to feel. I was like, okay, okay, look. I didn't know how to feel. Because I was like, okay, look. When I go at black South Africans so hard, it's not because I have anything. It's because... I genuinely care about them, right? And I, I'm trying to once and look, the, the path that you guys chose is not going to end well for you because I know what's going to happen. It's already happening, okay? You guys, instead of you, look, instead of you guys doing what Zimbabwe did, right? Because right now it's projected as Zimbabwe would actually, Zimbabwe is projected to actually do better than you in the future. Zimbabwe, the bouncing back where they had a major wheat harvest, right? You know, Floyd Mayweather just came to Zimbabwe, I think, I think a, a, a couple of days ago. Like, they're on track of surpassing you, and you guys are declining. But I said, but see, the reason is because, once again, they made the hard decisions early on. Mugabe realized that as long as you had a white buffer class in the country, right, Zimbabwe could never really move forward. So Mugabe went out of his way to remove the white buffer class. And yeah, he paid for it. Yeah, Zimbabwe, Black South Africa, punted up, right? But guess what, right? They went through growing pains, and now they're doing better. Now they can move on. See, because they made the hard choice ahead of time, they were able to get rid of the white buffer class, and now Zimbabwe is now falling in the hands of the, of the black indigenous people. And now they're growing. Now they're doing better, right? You know, it's also funny about this. It happened almost right. When, 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 when Mugabe got rid of the white buffer class, right, and essentially returned the territory and the land back to the, the blacks and babas, right? Yes, at first there was, there was some troubles, right? Remember how you had all of these Western newspapers talking about how, oh my God, um, famine, oh my... Western outlets, Western nations loved talking about Zimbabwe and how, oh, because because Mugabe returned everything back to the black and digital, right? The country was feeling, right? That was a couple years ago. But haven't you been noticing how Western media has been very silent on Zimbabwe recently? They don't talk about Zimbabwe anymore. And the reason is because although Mugabe's policies, you know, uh, were not well executed, they were the right policies. And it took time. But in the end, right, the fruits, the fruits of his policies worked, right? The, the, in the end, where right, the people were able to... In the end, his policies proved to be right. Because now what's happened, and in the past couple of years, Zimbabwe has returned to being a breadbasket. In fact, they're actually outproducing the, 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 the quote-unquote white farmers. The, the, black, the black Zimbabwean farmers are actually doing better compared to, to, to when the white farmers were there. So now all of a sudden, all of these Western media outlets that, that were just running all these articles about Zimbabwe are quiet now. In fact, Zimbabwe, that is, 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 not, of course, they're having some issues with the currency, but for the most part, they're projected, they're projected to grow, right? And and, and things keep going, though, the way they're going, they will, it's actually, they will actually be do better than, than, than South Africa in the future, right? So all of the countries, whether it's, it's Nigeria, Zimbabwe, all the black countries that were struggling actually better to do better. But yeah, but see, once again, that's only because you know, Zimbabwe made they made the tough decision of 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 saying, hey, look, we are going to get rid of the white buffer class, right, and essentially deal with the pain now, so that we can, we can benefit later." 
Blacks and Africans didn't do this. They thought, okay, if we just tolerate the black, the, the quote unquote white buffer class, then you know, uh, uh, uh they. Th- Blacks and Africans made an agreement in which they would tolerate the quote-unquote white buffer class in exchange for some kind of political control. And I said that was not going to work. And it's not working, right? Because I said, once again, not only was the white buffer class going to maintain all the wealth, but they were going to ensure that eventually they would get back to political power. And you're seeing that, right? They still own all the wealth. And now, with the help of the DA... They're slowly trying to slowly get him back focal power. There's a real chance you may have a white president in Africa soon. I mean, it's, it's crazy. And I said, look, you're going to end up in a situation where you may end up being put under semi-apartheid where the whites have control of all the wealth and they essentially control the political system. That's what's going, right? So in other words, you, you in other words, right, the reason why I go at Black South Africa, because I, the reason why I go at Black South Africa so hard because I recognize, look, Zimbabwe made the right choice. They got rid of the white buffer class early, right? Got them out of early because look, Zimbabwe has a lot of issues, but guess what? One of those issues is not race. That's not an issue anymore. They got rid of the white buffer class early so, so they could go on to build to rebuild to rebuild the country into a prosperous black nation. You, however, because you guys refuse to deal with the white buffer class, I said, what's going to happen is that eventually you're going to end up in a situation in which you're going to have to deal with them violently. And I had this conversation. That's what's going to come, right? And it's like, it's getting so bad that even even the, even the British, even the Anglo-Saxons who, who hate Mugabe, even they have to write articles admitting that, yeah, South Africa is projected to, to do worse. In fact, it's, in fact, Zimbabwe, Nigeria, and many, many black cultures are, Zimbabwe, Nigeria, many of these black African nations actually project to do better than South Africa in the future. Better. And these are folks who hate Mugabe, and even they have to admit this. And so what's going to happen is that it's going to keep declining, it's going to keep declining until it re- reaches, reaches rock bottom. And black South Africans are going to be forced to use violence to deal with the white minority. I'm telling you, that's what's, it's going to come to that. So either you deal with it now, or you're going to have to use violence in the future. Pick your side. But anyway... That's the reason why I focus so much. I had to add that part because people keep asking why am I so blessed? I'm like, Look, I'm obsessed with him because I understand. Because I, the reason why I'm obsessed with blessed Africans right, is because I know that they purposely, they purposely agreed to essentially be dominated by by a white minority so they could have some economic benefit. I said, look, that arrangement is not going to last. The, it's going to come to a point where you're gonna have to use violence. Now, you can try to to, to, to deal with the to, with the white buffer class now in a peaceful way, in a peaceful way, or you can wait until everything collapses and you have to use violence. Choose your side. But when it comes to countries like Zimbabwe, who chose to who chose to deal with the whites early on, they're doing better, and they're gonna and it's projected and it's projected that they're gonna, they're gonna surpass you in the future. So so keep playing games, keep 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 hugging the whites and see how it ends for you. But anyway, um, that should be about it. But um, I I, uh, I think that's about it for me now. But um, guys, tell me to tell what you guys think. But I really had to miss it because I just I got tired. I got tired. I got tired of, of of black Africans refusing, refusing, refusing to recognize that they are in, they are technically in a racial war. You have been forced into a racial classification, and the whole world essentially treats you with based on that racial classification. And you are by default now in a racial war because every other group puts you at the bottom based on the racial classification that that you are forced into. And until you recognize this, right, you're going to keep you're going to keep getting your ass beat in Tunisia. You're going to keep facing racial slurs in Asia. You're going to keep being disrespected and, and you're going to be saying, "Oh my god, I wonder why." You're going to keep being poorer than the North African states and you're going to be saying, "Oh my god, I wonder why." 
it's just, it, I'm tired of it. Black Africans, stop being naive, okay? You need to wake up and recognize that you are in a racial war. And you still need to, 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 to adapt to that. Until you realize this, you're going to contribute in the bottom. Now, here's the thing. I think about right. There's an opportunity to manifest the African century. But if you don't make the right moves, you're going to be missing it. So, and, 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 to, and I think part of uh, a part of taking and part of taking of taking opportunity. Look, in order for you to not miss opportunity, right? You're gonna have to also understand the, the racial environment too. But um, anything else? Uh, I think that's about it. Um, so I'm gonna let you guys go. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, tell me in the chat what you guys um, think about this. With that being said, hammer out.